What's up, guys? I have an absolute banger for you here today. We have five of us doing this podcast. You don't have to watch the video because it's just alpha playtest footage looped over and over, but I highly suggest you listen. Some very unique insights from all of us, along with Redbeard's take and experience on the alpha playtest. You're not going to want to miss this one. Trust me. What's up, guys? I got a few people here. Destroyer, Gertrude, Luna Moth, and the Redbeard VIP himself. We're going to be talking about quite a few different things here. Stay tuned to the end. You're not going to want to miss this one. So for the first question up, I have early access delay. What are the speculations behind this? Whatever, you know, I, I know you're a VIP, Mortis, but make sure what you say here, you know, is of opinion. You know, don't don't put yourself in a bad spot. You know, I, I would hate to get Rick mad, you know, but uh, speculations is what I'm looking for. Uh, would you rather the game be delayed until it's nice and finalized where it's comfortable, where it's not uh, um, <clears throat> anything close to being a the day before, which I know this isn't going to be the day before, but I mean, you, know, you still don't have those idiots in the background that think this is a scam after a play test. I mean, come on, people. With some high content creators, you know, high level people like Operator Drewski, Big Fry, all them. <laughs> Fucking, it's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so the the early access delay, um, I I can I can honestly tell you why. Um, I can honestly tell you why it was pushed back. Uh, I know Rick doesn't really care if I if I mention it, um, because I'm just being true to form and everything that he has already said, he said it to all of the VIPs and then he's made it, you know, pretty much kind of just public within the discord as well. Um, when people ask, it was more so just to get optimization better. Um, that was one of the things that they had a lot of issues with during the, the, the private play test that we had, uh, it was optimization. And that's the number one thing that they're working on right now is, is making sure that the game functions on a large variety of builds. Um, because later, I, I, if I remember correctly from this question sheet you had sent me, um, there, there's going to be a question about my experience with the game, and that all ties into, you know, optimization, making sure the game is fleshed out. Um, now, I will say that as for uh, whether or not they should, you know, delay the game, I, I honestly believe a uh, best case scenario just to get people to keep their fucking mouth shut and stop throwing around the day before accusation or, oh, this game's going to die in nine months accusation. Um, I know it was supposed to come out uh, into early access by the end of uh, quarter one, 2024, which is in about 48 hours. Um, yeah. That's not the case, obviously. But I, I think that if they push it back to later this year, even the beginning of 2025, honestly, like who the hell is going to talk shit about the game if it's good? Who, yeah. Who's going to care? We're just going to have to wait a little bit longer. That's the only thing you can pin against these guys. But if it comes out and it's almost fucking flawless, I mean, who cares at that point? Who cares? My uh, my only issue is if they do push it to 2025, how the hell am I going to get enough content to do a podcast every week? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to break down every single playtester's man, video, we bro. Can talk, we can talk about the rice balls, man. At the rice yeah, balls. <laughs> for sure, dude. Oh, the, I think the best thing to talk do uh, to uh, talk about right now is just Tarkov Arena, you know, and related to Grey Zone. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah totally. perfect just perfect Tarkov arena is a is a flawless experience yeah we'll just yeah that's 100 percent. but uh so we, we know pretty them. much uh the exactly why now that which uh optimization and whatnot i feel it has a good portion to do with pvp aspect wasn't Grey Zone just supposed to be PvE in the beginning, or was it supposed to be just PvP and then the community wanted PvE also? Does anybody so remember? As far as as far as I've been able to to remember, the game has always been a, a PvE VP game with a major emphasis on PvE and, and PvP kind of taking like a like a shotgun seat to it. Okay. And I could have sworn there was something that was uh it was supposed to be just PvE or PvP. I I don't know. I came in uh I'd say yeah, late right. January, yeah. bro. So I was yeah, about two build. months late. <laughs> yeah, there's a build where this it's the one that we'll experience once everybody's able to get in, where you're going to have the choice of either going to servers where 
you can't be killed by another player or servers that you can. Yeah. Is what we know. I, and uh... Obviously, from the people who played, they did play a version where they could kill each other. But we won't get to see that once we get our hands on it. I hear you. Um, Destroyer, what were you saying? Sorry, uh, I had started uh, talking. No, it's all right. It's all right. I was just saying I could see them if they, you know, if they continue to, to push back to really iron out all the optimization and you know make it so that they have a as smooth as possible launch because you know every game launches with some sort of hiccup. It's a, yeah. It's a, it's a guaranteed. But I could see them, you know, maybe invite, you know, probably doing what they did with uh, Redbeard and all the other content creators, and like maybe do like a bigger but still closed beta test to, you know, get everyone back, see how it works, see how it works with people from all around the world playing, um, how it optimizes, and all how right. all that has been fleshed out, and see what other kinks that are still in the system or new kinks after all the updates that they implemented and how they can iron all that out. So I, I wouldn't be too concerned if they push the, you know, if they push it out to 2025 um, or even uh, quarter three or quarter four of this year. Uh, I, I could I could definitely see them it, bringing back content creators and uh, even maybe reaching out to like the some of like the more frequenting members of their discord and the community uh to like do right. like a large closed beta yeah i um uh, i'm thinking it'll be no later than two to three months which would put it right on par with tarkov's wipe and if i had to go on ads and it was my company which i mean mara might be drunk that day and said fuck it Let's release it. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is. I've been saying you this never every know. day for the past few months in GZW, man. Say, it, it's steal all, Tarkov players, it's, bro. It's all depending on Mara's mood in the morning, or how drunk he got with with Fosic. Do the do, night before. do we have the address for the actual um, company where we they do. they doing well, everything? I do. Okay, well, I, do. I I have but, an alcohol uh, shipping license. So Fostick told <laughs> me to not send him anything. Remember I was Damn gonna try it. to send them some chocolate powder? <laughs> some you chocolate powder. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you, right. you had me at powder. chocolate powder. I mean, first off, what is this gonna Why be some dark he, yeah. cocaine or something? No, like... no, I was just gonna send them some chocolate powder for them to drink because you know they don't have brands that I have here and I wanted to send them some I'm not sure we want to do that, Luna. After what, uh, <laughs> Ricky, right? <laughs> she hit the server. Yeah, I was literally right. about to say that. <laughs> right, right. So we, we might get people running the servers. Hey, listen, don't send anything. And uh, after that, I've been telling everybody, you know, don't send anything. But yes, they, they do have an address. And we have talked about them setting a P.O. box. Did but nothing beyond that. Did they, did Foxic say it under the presumption of that, look, we don't need anything else, we're totally covered here, or like, don't do it, we don't want it? Because I, I feel mean, like I, they're scared. I feel I, like they're scared. They don't want anything being sent to them that could harm them in any way. I mean, yeah, I think they're taking care of I was about to say, anthrax is a real fucking thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, no, it's not they, a figment they of our imagination. Yeah, they generally don't want to get in any form of trouble Ooh. in health wise, right? Lo and behold, you're making possibly a game that's gonna kill other games. Who would it be below <laughs> to for this someone so for a game developer to send something to somebody to uh delay their game, you know, so they can make a little bit honestly, more money, you know? So that's honestly, that's a man, good uh, a good call. The shit that's going on with X Defiant and toxic work environments, man. I, I'm starting to think that'd be more of a reality that's that's super uncomfortable to admit. Toxic work environment. What yeah. are you talking about? Ricky only stabbed Foster a couple times the first time <laughs> they got to the office. I mean, there's only been like what three kidnappings from Foxic. I I I told him this morning. Watch. Let's me. Uh, or no, it was yesterday because I was talking with him about something. I said, I just had an idea for a video, dot, dot, dot. Me and a couple buddies are flying out to find you and kidnap you for an dot, dot, dot interview. And then it's uh, one of the guys from the office saying, shh, 
with his uh, hair parted. I'll throw it in the uh, video. <laughs> Fucking hilarious, dude. For sure. But um, if nobody has anything to add towards the uh, delay speculations or um, you know, oh, sure. when they I feel it should uh, come out. Before. This is this wouldn't be the first game, right? Just like everybody else, we've we've waited for many games, right? We've yep. all been disappointed at some point. We've all been fulfilled. Dead matter. For some other games, right? Right. Now, <laughs> my personal Not opinion for yeah, my personal opinion for GCW is a little bit more complicated. Wait, the the way that they have handled their PR has been very eccentric. It's not, it hasn't been in any way, shape, or form normal. It has not been. Yeah. All of their announcements are beyond the word delayed. <laughs> like the word delayed is an understatement. Uh, including the Discord, including the Discord. Changes to the Discord, they announce them, they do them, and they announce them maybe a month after they've done the change, right? Yeah. And the announcements in Discord have been abysmal. And I know that they have been informed of those things. Like, for example, when they did the 23 minute gameplay, they created a voice chat. And I was like, what? A voice? <laughs> Does that make sense, right? Fucking, yeah, go to fucking travels. Right. So <laughs> I'm not saying that they're, that, you know, that Fossick, I know it's Fossick the one in charge. I'm not saying that he's a person who's not doing a great job. I'm just saying that the way that things have been handled maybe can be handled better or could have been handled better does that make sense yeah yeah no in i understand delay, what you're saying right in terms of the delay itself obviously we all know that mara it was his hands it was on him to do that yeah we all know that the way he did it might have been the best could have been better yep. and i tell you guys and i tell the viewers the same thing i tell rick since day one you know they take as long as they want to take they take as long as they need you know we don't want a botched release right we want to they fulfill the goals that they want us to see right yeah and that goes to red beard right you know do you feel like the goals that they've set for the game have been breached in your experience so with what i played um i think as far as like you know hitting any sort of goalposts um or, or hitting any sort of uh, any sort of objectives really honestly i think that i think they're in the ballpark of where they should be i don't think they've necessarily hit any sort of you know goal or objective uh, because if they did the game would be coming out in you know 48 hours the game yeah. would be released into early access they wouldn't really have any major issues they maybe would have delayed it you know another month or so um but i mean we're talking about multiple months where this game is going to be delayed uh potentially so i mean honestly i mean i think they would even admit it themselves they haven't really hit any major goals or milestones other than we've got people in to play the game we're planning on you know doing something like this again maybe in the future um, and we're still aiming for an early access launch. Um, all three of those things right now, they're just really working on. And I think once they start hitting those and things start becoming more apparent, um, I think that's when we can actually have a genuine conversation about like when, like have the goals been met, have the objectives been met, are people satisfied with the product they're about to receive? At least that's me in my eyes. And I'm quite happy with Mara when he did the announcement. I'm perfectly fine that he did it on Twitter and stuff like that. Like, right, yeah, right. Mo like, like most game developers doesn't talk to the fucking common people, and they don't delay games because they have a timeline. Like, there, it, there's so many games that just like, ah, yeah, we set a timeline, so we need to hold to it. Like, that's their own fault. They, they set their own timeline. Like this. They set a date, and as soon as you set a date, everyone is just gonna like flock to that date. But like, Mad Finger Games did a good thing. Like, quarter one, right. we're aiming for right. quarter one. Like, right, right. And yeah. we all have to keep in mind that all of us here have a very particular mindset, right? Like, mm -hmm. we know why we're here, we know that 
patience is the key to the product that they want to bring us. Greatest game ever. Right. And yeah. unfortunately, we are a super minority. Right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. The, s- the vast majority <clears throat> of the 30 odd thousand people in the Discord, right, want to play the game yesterday. And, <laughs> and yeah. yeah. You know, so that's that goes to say on how they've handled information. You know, we're patient and we'll wait as long as it needs f- just to get a piece of information. But er- everybody else in the Discord and everybody else hitting refresh on their YouTube page, <laughs> the patience that we have. Well, uh, I'll, like, I'll put it. Oh, and you're fucking chatting like, oh, when, when, in, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? Like, I, I feel bad for the mods. <laughs> That's why Same they needed here. more I mods. Feel bad for those fucking guys. You know, I, I'll put it like this. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll put it like this. God, how, how, how am I gonna phrase this in a way that would make sense? Because, I mean, there's so much you could say about how they've handled the information in terms of like, you know, they were like, yeah, we're, you know, we're still planning on a quarter one release. And then a few days later, they're saying like, uh, actually, we got some more work to do. Yeah. Commendable, very commendable. Um, and they knew people were not going to be happy with that. But right. I, I, I want to say at least it's not like a situation that's going on with like, you know, X Defiant or, you know, the dead and gone fucking day before um where the game was you know largely speculated and we pretty much had damn near solid confirmation that the game would be releasing like tomorrow and then all of a sudden something happens and they make an official tweet where it's like hey actually we're not releasing tomorrow um we don't know when we're coming home just just follow us and stay tuned at least they had the balls (laughs) yeah Yeah. exactly we're we're fixing the net code for the 15th time because people don't know how to do their fucking jobs um but i think genuinely at at this point right people were very upset whenever mark made the tweet saying like hey guys gray zone warfare is just not in a state right now that our vips our community and the devs have you know felt comfortable with us releasing we're just not at that point right now so we just need more time and you know how people may feel about it is one thing but you gotta fucking respect them for just laying it all out you know, yeah. balls on yeah, the 100%. table, just showing everybody what they got. Yeah. And to be 100%. honest, I've I've heard more from this company than that I've heard from multiple AAA games because they go silent yes. for months. Oh yeah. Yes, oh, that's like, very uh, important to to keep in mind. Very important yeah, to keep in mind. Like they're like yeah. they're actually talking in the thing. Like you can talk with any of developers basically. <laughs> like right. and you might get some snippets here and there, and they're like actually answering some questions that they know they can answer like it's actually really good right the interpersonal communication that we've had yeah. as a community with the developer has definitely been sure, outstanding, small, you know, outstanding. But AAA game uh, AAA studios could actually go to great zone warfare <laughs> Discord and copy most of it and be more successful. Just having a special PR guy that is in on stuff for like for the development that are allowed to like a checklist this year, this is you allowed to talk uh, talk about and actually have like a fucking PR person that actually talks to the community would do great for other studios. Just like 100%. having uh, like because fuck me, they talk a lot in there. Like Grayson, yeah. like it's like Ricky. You had Ricky the Chocolate Monster, and then <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on a minute, come on. <laughs> like let's not throw Ricky that on the bus. I think she's okay, already sorry. so far under the bus you can't even see her. Bro, yeah, <laughs> I know it all started with the flower. I know it all started with the dang flower, bro. But I haven't even been in the chat recently, and um, I already know what y'all talking about. It's pretty bad. <laughs> but uh so i guess for a quick recap we're thinking anywhere is from three months to a year out i i highly doubt it's a year but uh I'm don't panic closer don't panic the game's fucking good as redbeard <laughs> fucking stated i mean it, it, yep. there's the issues but there's not so everybody loves to compare it to Tarkov. Look at Tarkov. What did Tarkov have in the beginning? And look at where Tarkov is now. They're almost at a fucking... Yeah. They're closing on, in on a fucking decade. Okay? They had Factory. This game yeah. is polished as fucking shit. 
not as that polished, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the turret could be polished and, only so much, but I mean, and there's they work to do. actually jumped ahead of Tarkov as well, right? Because Tarkov, Tarkov's endgame was going to have one big map, and they already yeah. have that. They already have that. Yeah, with, exactly. <laughs> with, with how they set it up, the expandability is not a fucking word, but uh, the expandability to fucking make it way bigger. Because they set themselves on an island, and like I said before, there's already drugs on the island. But who are they shipping the drugs to? Why are they doing the drug trade if they're not going to fly the shit out on one of the two airfields or at the docks by a boat? Maybe that's a mission. Maybe that's DLC in the future. There's so many different ways they could go with this, you know? 100%. So it's just plain and simple. A submarine pen. I, I was a literally submarine. about to say that. The uh, Banpa, Banpei, however y'all say it, we really think that's a fucking submarine pen. And maybe and that's where like they're bringing the drugs, <laughs> you know? It, it looks like it has a house uh, at the top as well. Yep, I uh, I uh, could pull your video you after. The, yeah. Uh, we, do you have like a uh, picture? Where yeah. Where I'm just in, in, just in general or? Uh, yeah, I have the video. Uh, I'd like to move on to the next subject, and if we have time, yeah. we can bring it back. Because we're, we're at, like, 30 minutes down already. <laughs> That's a long chat for one subject, you know what I mean? But, uh, I, I needed you. one. I needed one. The, probably the most needed one. For sure, for sure. You, you, you started off the podcast with probably one of, like, the hardest fucking... The, the hardest and most, like, laborative questions to ask the other one shouldn't take this long hopefully, <laughs> hopefully well, but we'll see no we're, we're no a, we're, we're steamrolling bro a four minute video with kusho took us an hour and a half and it was just me and him <laughs> Dude, that's how my brain works at times give me footage i'll depict the fuck out of it but uh so nice pvp versus pve and them being merged do, uh, I feel everybody here is going to be PvP, period. What's the player base look like to you for PvP versus PvE? And do you think in the future they may push straight towards PvP or straight towards PvE? In my opinion, I would say if anything, the player base dies or something, it, it would be pushed straight towards PvP. I mean, it, get over it. it. They're going for a realism hardcore game, you know? It's, it's, just my opinion, and I I play a lot of Tarkov, so I I I know I'm biased towards a PVP um, playstyle. You know what? Uh, what's your opinions? I think that most PVE players will actually start with PVE, just only P, uh, PVE, because they don't want to be fucking curb stomped, and they will play there maybe three months, get to know the game basically, and that's like. Fuck, I see all all these other factions running around. I want to shoot them. And then I was like, I'm going to try PvP and jump over. That's what I yeah. think it's going to happen. So I, it's not going to be like Lormog said. It's going to be a pure split. I think it's going to be, I want to ease into the game, get to know the game, and then jump over to PvP. Because I think the PvP servers is actually going to be very heavy PvP. Um because I know some mods and developers I've talked to, it's like, ah, no, it's not going to be that heavy. It's like, are you sure? There are lots of deviants out there that love <laughs> PvP. It's like, yeah. I'm going to hunt people. I know myself, I'm going to hunt people. Mm. Like, I'm just going to stalk people. And like, even if they're a group of four, maybe shoot one or two and they're like, fuck off. Just, I just want that like, you know, okay, that's one down, down two down, let's have a kill record or whatever like that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have a kill record on stream so every time <laughs> i kill someone i just add to the tally well yeah. <laughs> my thing is uh i'm gonna be going so in depth to killing I'm, I'm i'm gonna start with my own faction and i hope there's uh you know the ability to cook in the game because i'll be a cannibal at that point you know i'll, I'll just be destroying them no <laughs> right oh. yep i did talk Bad about this in one of my videos the, for cannibalism the believe it or not the feature that i actually would like to see the most has to be the rogue i know yes. i talk about being crimson shield international day in and day out but i really look forward if i have to buy another account i have to buy four accounts five accounts for, for each faction that's fine but if we can get a rogue feature that's really yeah. what would set apart the, the pvp 
in relation to how PvP stands as a Echo Sphere in Tarkov. Right? Yeah. You have PvP that is natural and progresses in Tarkov, but in here, PvP is forced in the sense that somebody has to look for it. Right? You have to force it on upon other players in order to do mm -hmm. it. You know, it's not organic. And the feature of Rogue and how we've spoken about it in VC with the devs, it sounds like it would be very a nice addition to be able to just, I don't know, get aggro on your fob and then lose access to it. And then now you can just shoot anybody in the game. But then you will have to survive during the time that you're alive yeah. in that session. You, you won't have access to stash. You won't have access to, to using money or whatever. Because you're, you're maybe, rogue. yeah, because you're rogue. Like you, you're not gonna progress anymore. You're just there to PVP because that's what you wanted, anyways. I think it should be, yeah. I think it should be a count bound, <clears throat> like the rogueness. Like, oh, okay, you going bandit. Congratulations. Your account is now bandit. <laughs> My thing yeah, is, I, why, it makes sense. why you gotta be so harsh? <laughs> But it, no, but, no, no, but it makes cause, sense. Because that's gonna grief. That's gonna grief people. Because every time you go in, you're gonna have to team kill ten people or do the right. mission in a half an hour or whatever. Right. They, they did right. say they wanted the mission, but yeah, I think it should be account wide, and you should be able to work your way back as the same as uh, just going rogue. Like they should have on the west map that's fucking empty, <laughs> west side of the map. They should have. Uh, like a, not a bandit section uh but they will have some faction support not support but they're gonna have a faction guy i was like oh i want to work my way back to being good to yeah be able to access the faction. or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. or something like, it, like it's, uh, or yeah something a secondary person where you would have to do like a where you would get like a mission from or something yeah to get you back to that good standing but oh, um, we already know that you can buy yourself back in though yeah oh really? i just oh, i don't yeah, that's that is the current standing that we spoke with the devs that okay is, yeah that's all they have you can well. just buy your yeah. way back yeah I'm, fi I'm fine with that too like because then you would still have to make money while still being like you but, because you won't be able to have access to your money in your uh fob Unless oh. you're running around with like 10k all the time. Is, it, is that a set amount though? Or is that in relationship no clue. to the severity? No clue. Yeah, no clue. Yeah, there's there's no idea on, on how much it's gonna cost. I just know that the that the feature is gonna be there. Uh, yeah, honestly man. I'm I'm really excited for it. I think it's really ambitious, but it also ties it it, it ties in really well to uh what they spoke about, how they want it to be like a living world. Uh, yeah. where it's fluid and that your choices matter so that's, cause that's, it, uh, cause that's that's what I remember them saying is like it, we want if I, I I think I'm almost quoting it directly where they said that they want every choice every decision every step every shot every pull of the trigger they want you to think about it they want every decision you make to to have a consequence and that really reflects um, in that and then every like, move matters yeah yeah and then like tying that back into question of tactical the, 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 that we're expanding on now in terms of pvp versus pve and everything um given some of the games that have come out recently i would be really interested to see if they kind of separate those two different servers and go in two different routes uh with pvp oh, servers yeah. and pve servers true because I would be more interested to see in like a PVE server. Um, when the mod where, support comes out. Yeah, mod supports and things like that. But also like, I, I look at uh, Helldivers, for example, which is a PVE game. And how there is like a story progression progressing in the background. Um, and so it would be interesting to see how that story would progress in a PVE. Uh, setting where the factions were would be players in the different factions would be more encouraged to work together because it's more about pve instead of the pvp aspect yeah. and it would differentiate uh the different servers obviously if they did something like that that'd be much further down the line 
but I do think it'd be interesting to see them differentiate the servers so it's not just like I'm new to the game let me hop in a PvE server for a couple weeks and like work my way on my bike with my training wheels and then I'm now I know how to ride my bike and I don't need my training wheels let me hop on a PvP server like I feel like that that doesn't do justice to what a PvE server could do in a PvE game yeah no no, no of course not like you have DC with the role playing. <laughs> I, I think there's gonna be a couple of role playing servers on this. I think there's gonna be like one of those collaborative, um, like factions. Uh, I mean, PV server where like everyone is like rushing for the middle. Like, yeah, it's on key. the topic of modding. Yeah, I absolutely agree with everybody here for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I sure. think it's gonna look good. <laughs> Like just that they fucking like allowed modding is like wait what what did you say? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I that, I've had that several. Is one, yeah, that's one of the biggest how one game survives is modding. Right, that's what, exactly what I told Rick. I've had several meetings with them about it, and I don't know if you guys seen my suggestions, but if and when I get my hands in the game, I will try to mod it instantly. Oh, okay. that's awesome. Okay, that like the, awesome. the moment I get my hands on it, if, and even if I, I even told Rick, hey, listen, you know, if I even get VIP and I had my chance to play, I would have tried to mod it even then, when you guys were playtesting. <laughs> I I want to mod the game, and uh, I've had I've done several suggestions in GGW about server sided and user sided mods that I plan on trying to do on the game. I have to it's the longevity. I'd love to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want, though, like, GCW holds all the servers, so you get some consistencies with how a server runs, but you can actually access uh, your server that you rent to mod the actual server. That's what I want to see. Because uh, I don't, yeah, I, I know some people, are, but I have a server, a server at home. Yeah, but how many people can actually connect? I would rather them like okay i want to buy one uh, or i want to rent one server in north america uh for this game and i will i will like i'm gonna mod it to hell but you will get access to that uh, to your server basically that's what i would like to see i don't want them to just like here's the server pack or whatever like have fun because yeah no. it's gonna be uh, yeah, I want some consistency with all the servers. Sure, some you need to download 500 meg or like uh, 2 gig or whatever, but I want it to be on GCW's servers, basically. So, right. That's not a horrible idea. Yeah. Yep. Just to have just to have some consistency with how the uh, how the gameplay is. I'm not going to lie to you, man. The I've been modding for 8 years now and i have yet to find a singular company who embraces the community's work and adds it to the standard build of the game yeah and i think that would be fucking awesome like oh it's, wow this this one yeah. mod explodes and then on every community or, or on every like private servers or whatever they add like oh i'm gonna have this because this is a good mod and as soon as that, that happens, when everyone is else is using it and not GCW, either right. they would like, oh no, we want our own thing, or they're like, okay, we're gonna add it to the core game and like tweak it and make it like as integratable as possible. Because right. but most, not like most... not like the remaster for Battlefront, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> as sad as it is, I think the only reason why that doesn't happen <laughs> is for le uh, legal reasons. Yeah. Right. Here's, it's just sad as it is. That's, I'll that's talk to you from, from my experience. The the modding scene from this perspective of I would like this very popular mod to be in the core game. Usually the devs have their goals, obviously. Yeah. And modders, you know, we're very adventurous and we like to, to really push the envelope on what are the limitations of the game, right? And usually, it's always a LARP theme, right? Usually it's Star Wars or a very popular RPG theme. 
I'm not saying that those things would come to GCW, but it would be a very interesting scenario because at the end of the day, if there is a server that is controlled by somebody, right, and is dedicated, I can totally see right now a, I don't know if you guys really know a lot about Star Wars, but I could really see some regiments for jungle warfare from Clone Wars. Somebody would totally want to do a conversion of that and have clones fighting in a jungle setting. Right? I could see that. I'd, you know? I'd pay money to see an Ewok. Right, and somebody would do an Ewok on a jungle setting. You know, these are... This sounds a little bit outlandish, but people do it all the time in, in Arma, right? There's so many possibilities that would open up for the game's longevity, which is what really I tried to convey to the devs when I got the chance to speak with them. You know, the modding scene always extends the life of any game it touches. Yes. Right. If the they developers, <laughs> yeah, you know, the, if the developers want to have on their shoulders the longevity of the game, that's fine. Uh, you know, many developers pull it off. It's really hard. It's really taxing. You know, what about you, Red? What do you think about modding? I don't know if you've modded before. I don't know if you've played so, modding. I haven't modded before, but I have played this game that essentially just bases um, its entire um, foundation, essentially, off of the modding community, and that's Operation Harsh Doorstop. Um, right. That game <laughs> has been pretty much just, you know, been built from the ground up using nothing but community made mods and mod projects and shit like that. I just don't know how that would translate into gray zone warfare without it being one of those things people look at and immediately turns them away and i don't mean to say that because i think modding is a bad thing i think in games very similar to ohd daisy uh shit like that arma even um i feel like games like that have a spot have a place that's intended for them to be modded um but i think for some of the more outlandish stuff like i don't know like a starship troopers mod or a star wars mod as much as I would love to see people having fun with that in Grey Zone Warfare, I personally don't think it should be anywhere near the game. And and, and that, that hurts to say because I love seeing people be creative and have fun. Um, but I think in a game like this, in a scenario like this, I think that the modding scene would have to be like, uh, I wouldn't say extremely monitored, but I, I would... I would expect a few people to be like, yo, why the fuck is there a Star Wars mod in Grey Zone Warfare? Like, why? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. No, I agree um, with you. And that has happened with many other games mm. where there's outlandish themes in a game that nobody knows why. But there's a niche for it. And that's what yeah. I'm trying to say, or at least me and Girth are trying to say. There's there's always a niche for it. As, as for much sure. as... How do I say this? My suggestion of let's allow people to mod textures user side and that doesn't affect nor give them any form of advantages there's a bunch of other games i can out of the top of my head i could say foxhole does that i can say war thunder does that people can mod their own stuff and it doesn't affect the other person it only affects their experience their personal experience and it doesn't give them any advantage that's a niche and and that's a niche that is in the millions in those games and I those think to, niches, I, you know, promote the longevity of their experience, if that makes sense. No, for sure, Luna. And, and I wasn't trying to cut you off or anything. I just, no, I was no, just okay. thinking, um, I was just thinking in the middle of you talking, um, what if, what if they had this like monthly or weekly poll where like, you know, uh, they submit basically like a bunch of different mods for people to vote on and whatever the highest rating mods are, they just throw them into a server for a month. You know, just just to have people try them out and like keep that rotation going, just yeah. so you're not seeing like a super big influx of shit that you don't want anywhere near the game, but you're still showing respect and and you're still honoring the people who took the time out of their days uh, to mod the game, um, and, and then let them have their own servers where people can go and, and experience it on their own. I think that would be probably the fairest thing that Gray Zone could do if they're considering doing anything that involves a, a, a modding SDK. No, hundred percent. Like I, my, my whole statement is based on somebody has a dedicated server. Like I don't, it sounds cool that mods get promoted and they get the chance to be in the build, mm -hmm. but that's super rare. And I've never really seen that anywhere happen. 
because again the traditionalism is oh well here you go you get an access to being able to host your own server and go crazy doing whatever you want on it you know like that's sure. what i that's what i think that that should always be the baseline you know if they want to go ahead and see oh you know this particular mod has affected the gameplay in a way that it really nourishes and makes the experience better okay cool yeah. that can be added you know but obviously i don't see a star wars mod being an official mod on the bill. <laughs> no, no, i don't no, see no, that no, no, honestly no, no. let's be real yeah. let's yeah, be real we we all yeah. know luna just wants to be able to reenact the you know uh jurassic park original want... scene jurassic park? <laughs> in this open field right here i would love to see a good warhammer 40k uh kathakan uh fighters in this oh game. my god I, that would be so funny so like you mod all the weapons so it's like oh you have a bolter you have a last yeah, gun look, that would be it, so that makes funny. content you know that makes content for the game that yeah, promotes yeah, exactly. the game it sounds funny and ridiculous but those type of things are just pop memes so that promote hard. the game like, yeah, yeah those yeah, things yeah. pop up great and, and especially if they're really good if the mods are really good it's like oh have you tried this warhammer 40k mod for grace on warfare it's fucking awesome and they show it and it's actually awesome like the star wars thing with squad if you ever seen that yeah yeah the uh conversion yeah 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 it's like this is so much better than the fucking star wars games what the fuck yes <laughs> yes like yes like what right. and, for and the they viewers. look beautiful yeah, yeah for the yeah. viewers because i know that not a lot of people understand this but if someone were to get access to a dedicated server in gcw you're not going to see the map you're not going to see lamang somebody's going to recreate a space within that storytelling that they want let's just talk about star wars i guess somebody would rearrange and recreate endor in gcw's oh, yeah, engine yeah, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. would create new things in the game with that game engine and those mechanics yeah. is what we're trying to say you know that nobody's gonna straight up change a pmc's character into a clone to, and you'll see that in the main that's <laughs> not that's not what you're gonna see no, is no, that no, a pmc <laughs> It, it it would be, but I, I honestly I think the all the mod things I, I don't I don't really see the them having official servers with mods. Yeah, no, hundred uh, percent. Because that that just it that just invites um like really bad issues with uh, uh oh your bias or your favor this mod content creator and all that stuff. Yeah, and that's just right. yeah. a lot of drama that I know for a fact no one wants to deal with. Yeah. Um, Amen. Because no one, everyone has enough drama in their life to begin with, and no one wants to just invite more drama just, just, just for you know. Shit! Don't like get that. me up here and start fucking preaching. I'm fired up, bro. I'm sure we all got our own can of worms we can bring out to the table, but. Hey, howdy, hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, so, I, so I would actually like to see an official mod test server for each region and if uh, uh just one or two like but uh, servers but if a community mod gets so big that everyone else is using it they talk to the community uh, like they talk to the creators like hey we want to implement this in the test server to actually see how it is and if it goes through you like they will actually get paid because i don't know like a mod like a thousand bucks or something like that would actually make modders also strive for much better instead of just this is enough that i want I, I want to be able to see like some like they might be able to buy the mod from you and have you, then have you heard of xfil uh, <laughs> no you haven't heard of xfil red have you wrote have you uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was playing it the other day. I, no, I know. My me, I know, I know. Ass, I, know. I, would, ooh, I would never play Xville. <laughs> Holy shit. Anyways, um, yes, I have heard of Xville, and I would never let that shit touch a fucking hard drive in my computer. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, no, that's I'm so that's sorry. Fine. That was kind of harsh. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. The reason I bring it up is because I've had also a lot of conversations with the developers there. And they actually have that exact idea okay. of actually providing <laughs> fundings for modders to mod the game. 
Uh, it would brother, be I thought you were about to I, say I, that you're a dev on X Phil, and I was about to just I, leave this fucking VC. No, no. I, I thought you were gonna say that the devs were saying that they would never install it on their hard drive. <laughs> like, whoa, their own game? <laughs> wow. No, 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 no. They they're willing. They they like the idea of being able to yeah. pay people to actually mod the game and do all the conversions they would like to do to the game. Yeah, I, well, that's I'm, nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about that. It's more like, oh, you made a good mod. We want to implement this. And then they pay him for... Yeah, exactly. For Just for, you know, legal reasons and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're basically you paying do... non-devs at that point to be a dev for your game, in my eyes. Well, yeah. Yeah. You're contracting. You're contracting yeah, yeah. people out as a third party. Yeah. To yeah. make additional content for your game. So they're not developers. It's just a contractor you paid. Yeah, because oh. everyone will have a awesome idea. Yeah. Like like once in a blue moon right and if they have an awesome idea and make a mod for it they should be able to instead of gcw just stealing the fucking idea okay. it would go better for the community like oh wait wait my friend is a modder he got paid for his mod that is awesome okay how can i make my mod better like they will like like that would be really good for modders as well like i think many models will co would come to this game and try and make the game experience better like okay what and they will look at crazy w suggestions and like oh okay what suggestion do people want oh let's say mine i su suggest them because i wanted in game oh bracing i'm gonna do bracing and they do a bracing system that's really good and like and and they iterate it and iterate it and as and a couple of months down the line everyone every community server is using bracing because there isn't bracing in the main game and yeah. maybe the gracie w doesn't have the time to do the bracing but that they want it in the game instead of just so they implement the it. And, yeah yeah instead of stealing that id uh, they just <clears throat> fuck let's just pay him as a contractor fee and it's already done right so we just have to implement it and maybe talk to him like what where uh, what falls to a uh, wall what bugs is it in? like like just like talk to the model it's like okay we want to pay uh, pay you or like buy the mod or whatever can, can i do that just, with I, my thoughts for gzw you okay. think <laughs> I, I think that would be amazing i know that we've really talked a lot about yeah so potential modding but i don't yeah. From my conversations with Rick, I don't think they, um, I, I don't think modding is going to be really a thing. Hopefully they listen to this uh, you know, podcast. It's, it's, it's all suggestions, bro. That's, that's what they want. Yeah. Um, hey, like, we're giving it to them. servers is down the line, but very down the line. It, yeah. But you know, it, If you yeah. see this that's, and you yeah. want mods, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's show them go. what There's... we want. Okay, guys. Let's give them a one-to-one -one ratio, boys. But um, soldiers with jiggle physics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on a minute. I, I want to have momentum that's worse than Tarkov. Please. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, for no, sure. No, please yeah. not. Please not. Let's just let's just handicap it. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody in a wheelchair now, ASAP. <laughs> Basically, you know. Oh, but um. Oh yeah, like an off-road uh, moped. That would be actually funny. Oh Jesus! Holy shit, Mad Max type beat. Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah, like... we did speak on that for quite a bit. Whenever the question was, "Do you like PVE or PVP?" Pretty much. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's thirty minutes by. But uh, all right, it was a good, uh, good podcast. No, no, it's still going on, guys. Don't leave yet. So, <clears throat> PVE, PVP. If it should be in there, y'all basically said, yeah, they might converge to PvP period, the PvE players. Uh, do you feel there's going to be enough PvP period within Greyzone Warfare? Not at first. I, I can easily tell you right now that PvE will be the pro... The, it'll be the dominant mode for a qu quite a long time. Okay. I, I will say that. It'll, it'll be a very okay. dominant mode for quite some time. Um, there are going to be people who are just going to jump straight into the PVP. Um, those guys are the adrenaline junkies who just W key around Tarkov, just doming people all day. Those are going to be the people who are going to jump straight into the PVP. Uh, veterans of the game are going to jump into PVP. 
Um, but I think for the large majority, especially people who don't want to play Tarkov because of the harsh PvP elements, they're going to stick with uh, PvE for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. That, that hard, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, the, I, I will tell you this. The, the AI is already fucking grueling enough. So, I mean, if, if the AI... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The AI themselves are better than most players in Tarkov. If that if that gives you any sort of indication on on how the game is going to be played, um, yeah. the the AI are just as good, if not better, than actual players. Have but, uh, you played any other game before where you could give like a frame of reference on how difficult the AI is? Um, God, Talk that's a snipers <laughs> when you get too close. Honestly. It would be like, I don't even think there's a good comparison to how cracked the AI is. Like, I can't give an AI to AI comparison. I guess you could say if you if you guys ever played Gears of War and played on any difficulty, that's like almost the max difficulty in that game. Yeah. How the AI just like literally one tap you and just run up on you and like shit all over you. Yeah. That's how the AI are in, in, in Grey Zone Warfare. They do not give a fuck, bro. You can hear these motherfuckers talking shit from like down the road and they'll call you any name in the book that they can think of and they'll charge after you and start shooting at you. Yeah. Oh my God. It's it is like a Roshala on... They're drug. hyped up on cocaine. Yes. Yes, it, they play... Every AI that I had an encounter with almost acted exactly like a Roshala makes sense but with squad tactics but with squad tactics yes that's actually a great fucking way to put it it's like Rashala was in squad and you had to fight Rashala. okay that's a nightmare it is or, it's a fucking or, nightmare or, and it's or, genuinely or, terrifying or a platoon of uh Rishala's basically <laughs> pretty much and i i'm talking like we didn't even get to see the heavily armored guys these were all people yeah. within the little like you know First like time. right outside the first two lz's you know, these are just Give in the out. small little community inside the LZ. So the boss had armor, right? Like the boss at the marketplace, I think it was, or the I think there was one guy upstairs uh, that was. I think he, uh, yeah, I think he had armor on. Like he had some armor on. He wasn't like armored up, but he was like a step higher than the grunts I, around him. I hadn't seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he bugged on a couple of guys. He just stood still and took a headshot and died. But yeah, that, that was too bad. So, uh, beings that you said that, uh, I'm happy because we have your insight after uh, having like three hours in the, um, <laughs> the play fest, sadly, due to uh, complications. Um, what do you feel would be... So for PvP players, do you feel... I'm trying to find a way to phrase this on the fly. Uh, the PvP players getting into the game, do you feel they may get to a frustration point where they turn on their own faction just for PvP? So, so uh, man, um, so I, I would say, because like I, I played a little bit more than three hours of the game. I, I, I clocked about 10, 12 hours oh, okay. even with the issues that I had. Um, I, Honestly, it's very hard to say because I wasn't able to experience the small little trial of PvP that they did do. Um, I, I will tell you this, though. There is going to be a point where if you're in a strictly PvP lobby uh, and, and the communication that you're having with your teammates isn't good, you're going to end up gunning down one of your teammates. I, it, it's going to yeah. be... It's just yeah. going to be one of those things that you're, you're not going to be able to avoid. Um, however turning on your own team just for the sake of the game and like how it kind of rides itself out i don't necessarily know how that's going to look because you know the people who did have a pvp um people who did have a reference for what the pvp is going to be like they just ran around the woods stabbing each other for you know five six seven hours um that's not like a true indication of how the pvp is going to be played um and, and of course since i'm embargoed um from showing like hud systems and pvp I, I can't I can't really dive into like how it performed or it just I can tell you that it wasn't it wasn't up to par for what they were hoping for right their hopes were that it was going to be like on par with the PVE and the PVE still had some issues but the PVP was was not 
as good as the PvP element. And, and they, it's just all dials back into what we talked about at the beginning with the optimization yeah. thing and, and desync and, you know, shit like that. Um, well, let's just speak about, like, what the PvP penalties for faction-on-faction faction violence may look like. So... Uh, some of this information, uh, I I don't necessarily know if I'm going to be able to talk about, but I, I yeah. do remember being told that there is going to be some sort of like honor system uh, with uh, factions. So if and I don't know if that's just going to be like server side, player account side, um, that's going to be more or less like something that we get told later on down the line. But I do remember hearing and reading about an honor system of some kind uh you know if i mean if you're a problematic player they're not going to stamp you like they do in like grand theft auto online where you wear a dunce cap or you know if you're caught cheating in tarkov they don't give you a, a, a like a long ass name to tell everybody that you're a cheater um but the honor system is is going to be you know it i don't really know the specifics of how it's going to play out if i were to guess I would assume it has something to do with like the types of missions you can accept from the vendor at a certain time, the type of yeah. shit you can get from a vendor at a certain time. If you have a higher honor, you can get higher shit, lower honor. You don't get as good. You don't get as much good shit. Um, and then you have to somehow manage to make up your honor while simultaneously continuing to do the missions that you're set out to do. So that is, that's going to be one of those things that we're here. We're going to probably end up hearing about, uh, later this year i i would i would hope so i'm i'm happy you spoke about an honor system that makes a a very good bit of sense and just the way my brain works tie that honor system to the little bird so you have to go boots on the ground and there's a cooldown if you um oh yeah yeah if the other player that you do not uh that you kill they do not tie in and say oh it was an accident they say oh yeah he did it on purpose or something you know that little option you could select supposedly that they uh plan yeah. to put in there tie that to the little mm -hmm. bird because nobody wants to be doing a running simulator just to get to pvp to die immediately yeah that's no, for sure it's and and from what i experienced firsthand with the game uh, <laughs> you're going to be walking for quite some fucking time uh, starting at headquarters and going to the first LZ. You are going to be walking forever. Forever, Jesus. bro. It, it took us a while to get to the first LZ on a little yeah. bird. Well, it, it would only it would only be longer if you're going on foot. I'm, I'm happy you just spoke of that because I now have another question, which is possibly the best one, and I don't even know if you can answer it. So each square on the map, what is that? Mm -hmm. Is that a thousand kilometers per square? What are we looking at? What, what's the time to run across, you feel, each square? So I don't necessarily know how big the grids are on the map. Um, the map that we got shown was not the full map, yeah. right? So we, I mean, we were given more room than what we could ever experience in one play session. Um, and we still didn't get the full experience. I will say this though, there, during the mission that we ran, there was only one mission during the play test and we ran through the mission. It was the rat's nest mission. Um, we ran through the mission and it took us 45 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour wow. to get from the, the first LZ to the extraction LZ. And now you have to think this game has no loading screens. There is absolutely no buffer between when you leave the headquarters to the first LZ to walking around the areas and collecting the intel to getting on the little bird again and going back to the headquarters. There is no loading screens. There's no buffering. There's there's nothing to indicate that there's like a, a, a loading process that has to happen. But yeah. it, it took us about 45 minutes to an hour to get through the entire uh, pavilion that we landed at. And then that, that was just us clearing buildings, um, grabbing intel, making sure that we were cleared across roads and intersections and, and you know, clearing out small little groups of, of people that are just standing in the middle of the road, like, you know, basically posting surveillance. Um, it's fucking huge. 
if if I had to give a good estimate on how big those squares are, they're fucking huge. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's actually a wonderful estimate right there. Fucking huge. I I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, Red Bear, by, by the way, the sprint, mm. the, like the sprint stamina. How long was it, or did you ever like time it? How long you could run until you were out? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't actually time the stand up, uh, stamina, but I will say that you can run. Okay. And the stamina. I, here's how I'll put it. The st you would get winded faster in Tarkov uh, sprinting okay. than you do in Gray Zone. Thank God. Thank oh, freaking God. Okay. But there's also a lot of stuff that ties into your stamina and your health and your hunger, uh, like IE, the environment that you're in. It's very human. Yeah. It's very hot. Um, so whenever you're running and exerting yourself, your stamina is going to take a hit over time. Your hydration is going to get tanked. Your hunger is going to get tanked. Now, we were having this issue during the play test. Um, and it's it's really fucking funny. And, and Rick, I, I'm sorry, I laughed my ass off when I started hearing about this. There were people who were getting dehydrated, like super quick in the play test. Yeah. And people are like, dude, I almost fucking died of dehydration, like literally just running across the street. And uh, that was one of the that was one of the first things they fixed alongside you know some optimization stuff. Um, they they turned down the. They turned down the uh, the harsh effects on the hydration and the hunger, but people were like literally about to die of hunger and, and dehydration just from running up yeah. the street. It was the funniest fucking shit I think I've ever seen in my life. It was the <laughs> most like reaction to the gameplay I've seen. It's like, oh, this is just gonna be a W game. Like you just gotta run through. It's like oh, hell W key. No. You can, yeah. But, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like. <laughs> Do you even look at the stamina bar when they're running? Cause like, oh, they run fast. It's like, yeah, it's fast, but it's short sprints. But, and then I think Landmark's like, oh, you're not gonna walk around like this. You're just gonna do sprinting. It's like, dude, like you're two minutes no, into not. the game. How, how the fuck, uh, uh, how the, uh, you're two minutes into the video. How the fuck would you know that when you don't know, no one has started sprinting yet. You don't know how the stamina bar works. Right? <laughs> it's like, fucking. That, yeah, they, so I've I, I seen him play a couple of times, but he was very critical of this game. It was like, he, he, he was probably uh, sent by Nikita to uh, shit on the game. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> All right, I take it back. I take it back. Ooh, conspiracies. All right. Let, hold on. Let me go grab a tinfoil hat. Oh, okay. Me. Let's uh, increase this to three hours of a video here, I guess, just on the conspiracy <laughs> portion now. <laughs> But uh, that, I feel you hit it pretty much nail on the head for uh, everything we just spoke about there. Uh, I'm not going to go into the portion I wanted to talk about with the towers and whatnot. I'll save that for another video because we, we really don't have time. And I want to stay to that time frame. Uh, for sure. A main thing I really wanted to look at was... So, okay, you, we, we went through the penalties portion. PvP versus PvE and what would deaths look like so what i mean by this is pve when you die you'll have a loot timer obviously to get your shit i feel pve wise that should be increased but also is your stuff lootable to anyone in the area even though it's yes. pve yes your your that's shit. what i would figure so we were so we were just sanctioned off in different servers right so like not all of us were on in the same Oof. server at the same time yeah but we were told that if you are in PVE and you see uh, a dead um, a dead PMC, essentially, uh, they would be lootable. Yeah. So, um, and I and I'll, I'll even pre I'll even uh, pretext it with all of this. Um, while we were running that rat's nest mission, people who we killed 15, 20 minutes prior were still in the body, or still in the body, still in the street. Um, their bodies were yes. still there after 15 or 20 minutes, and they were still lootable. Nothing that they had was gone. You could still go and loot it. You could still do anything um, with their weapons, their you know their cargo, anything like that. It, it was it was incredible to see because I thought the bodies may have despawned at some point. Um, yeah. But no, we're we're walking we're walking back to the town center because we thought we missed something, and we just look on the ground and there's like six people we just fucking shot twenty minutes later later stinking like a son of a bitch in the sun. We're like, oh, that's <laughs> cool. They're still here awesome nobody's been through here and we just carried on about our business 
Will the AI loot you? What Ooh. was that? Will the AI loot you if you are playing uh, a duo, for example, you and your friend go into town, you both die to AI. Will the AI go up to you and loot you? And, that, that's like, a good question. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah I, I feel so that would be sick. something. That would be, that would be so you know? <laughs> sick if that was true. Um, you, but unfortunately, you, I don't think they're doing that. I, w I would love to see a video of someone getting killed by an AI and they come back and find the AI <laughs> shooting at them with their own gun that they had. Yeah. Ran his damn pockets while he was dead and gone, bro. That's wild. I remember that was an achievement from Modern Warfare 2. You kill a guy, pick up his gun, and kill him again with it. Damn. <laughs> so uh, tactical, what, what was the question again? Like, they were PvP against PvE, or what was it? Uh, basically, what would death look like? PvP versus PvE, uh, because I, I fell under the presumption that possibly they would make it a little bit easier on uh, PvE players. So that your stuff wouldn't be lootable, possibly with another timer for like 30 minutes. Nobody could loot your stuff. You could get your stuff. You know, something uh, like that. That that was the presumption. I think you know? they said like it was gonna stay open for an hour. I think it is. They said yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Right, it, but not defended though. Not it it defended. would make sense that it would be all the same, and then just the PVP server. You're just able to kill other players. Everything stays the yeah. same. Just better kill yeah. uh, other players. But um. I have a real main one here. So uh, it's basically just uh, do you agree or do you not agree or whatever else you all want to add. So the state of Grey Zone Warfare, I feel they really hit the nail on the head pretty decently with the alpha footage and whatnot, which I do want to discuss with you all and what you all thought about it from playing it to viewing it. But um, where I'm mainly going with this is how to phrase it. Um, they need to figure out a actual EA launch that they cannot skip. And that's, I, I don't know exactly where they are with everything right now. If, oh, we need a delay because it was, we missed it by a week or by a month, you know? But um, I really feel they should probably double or even triple that time of estimated arrival. Um, along with the optimization, like you said, to AI, I don't know what's really holding them back right now, but I've seen AI take a shit ton of ammunition where, I mean, dude, there's <laughs> chest shot straight to the heart. I mean, you're gone. You know, they've said this before. Yeah. Brain kill, you're dead. Heart kill, you're dead. Stuff like that. Uh, and just on a side note here, I would like to see the AI also be reactive and try and revive their friends. Stuff like that, if that's possible. Their uh, AI mates. Not teammates. I, I don't know how you could say that. If they're going to coma, you mean? Yeah. Um. But besides the point. So they really need to also balance PvP. I know you said that it's it's gonna take a minute. Um. Uh, or they need to balance PvP or be more clear on. Uh. Which I mean, Rick did state before. You're you're not gonna be running into people constantly, which is. Awesome, you know, I, I don't want to run into PvP constantly, but I want to be able to find PvP when I want to. So there's different different implementations of that, which, I mean, we really don't have that much time, but I guess I could go into a little bit about the whole radio tower portion. Uh, basically, a radio tower, somewhat like DMZ, you don't pop up on the map, but you have a, a base commander of some sorts that pops up on the intercom. Hey, look. You're entering, entering a zone that another faction has captured the radio tower already. Not in a sense of like, oh, they're enemies, nothing like that. Just you have a know that they've captured this area already, could play into territories, something like that. But since you know they're there, you could do PvP if you want. They don't know you're there, but you know they're there. So it's kind of like a reverse situation there. But whenever you take that radio tower, it also helps you with discovering things in the air, the area, something like that. You know, it could play into, oh, if you have an enemy team camping you and they don't move within a certain amount of minutes or something, your commander says, hey, there's some unusual things going on in this area that we're picking up on the tower or something like that. You know, I, I don't know. There's just a bunch of speculation we could put behind that. 
that I would really like to put in another video because it's I feel that could be an hour and a half all in itself, you know. But um back to what gray zone really needs to do. Uh basically just optimization like what you said and get an EA. Need an EA. Yeah. Along with the whole PVP scenario, players anyone who's coming into this just for PVP, they need to know that they're not getting into PVP immediately. Unless they're going to be faction killing. And then you're going to go rogue, which I hope they have a very good situation for if that happens. You know, because people are just going to be going rogue, going rogue, going rogue. You know, they want a PVP. And that's going to be me, I swear to God. If I run for fucking five hours in here, keep dying, and I can't get to PVP for a video for me to be the first one saying... Hey, PvP, first look, GZW. I'm killing my own faction members, if not my own teammates. You know, <laughs> on right, purpose. Right, right. You know, if you can see where I'm going at this. But uh, add what you want. Um, I'd love to see all inside on that portion. I think PvP is going to be heavily in the middle around the first week or so. Because I think people will try and go to the middle as, so as soon as possible just to check it out and there are mountains and valleys in the middle i think the pvp is going to be heavy there i don't think the pvp is going to be heavy in the beginner towns even if some people will try and do it but that's going to take forever as well even if they die in, in someone else beginner town it's going to take them at least 20 minutes to get back right i don't think they they might go do it once and then they see fuck that took me forever to just get there i'm not going to do it again I'm just going to try and go to the middle because the middle is the fastest and probably be the heavily, uh, most heavily contested area, uh, I think. Uh, and the EA date, I think they should just finish the game without announcing anything. And then they will say, hey, in a month we will, really, uh, we will uh, release the game at this date. Because then they have, like, we can make the date. Because as soon as you miss one date, people are going to get so mad. Like, yep. yeah, so I think they should just finish the game quietly. And then announce, we will release the game uh, in one month's time at this date. And uh, and then during this one month, they're just going to do polishing, basically. And like, small things they didn't think of. Uh, I think that, that I've always thought that was the best release thing you should you shouldn't ever put like stress on yourself you shouldn't ever like i'm gonna do it on this date i'm gonna do it on this date because yeah. there's so many games out there that's done that and they flopped horribly because they fucking missed the date like you mm -hmm. like um, yeah just finish the game don't say a date and just when the game is 100 percent done it's like okay the core game is done and most of the polishing is done as well. Okay, now we can announce it. One month uh, on, uh, from one month now, and during this one month up to release, they will could probably have like an open beta or like a closed beta for a weekend just to get the hype even higher because you know the game is done. So everyone else is just gonna be like, "Oh, this is fucking awesome!" Uh, the closed beta was really good. The open beta or uh, closed or open beta or whatever, and maybe hire some streamers to play it for you basically like crowd would be one just having those tens of thousands of pe people just watching it and it's like fuck that is looks awesome just having that exposure with a finished game basically instead of having oh we have a closed alpha or open alpha or something like that i think yeah that's probably be the best way i think that's nail on the head but um sadly with mara's track record you know for a fact we're just gonna get the game randomly <laughs> it's just gonna, we're, we're all gonna wake up nobody's gonna know some dude's gonna be that that hasn't ever jumped in chat before is gonna be in there playing gray zone warfare by himself that's yeah, how we're gonna wake up a, i mean that would be I'm a not, great stunt yeah uh, Listen, I, man. I keep telling you man. i, keep telling I, I you. think um, they for sure have an internal um, EA date. They for sure have that. I think the only reason, uh, like Gert said, that they don't release it is because it puts a lot of unneeded stress and anxiety on the shoulders of the developers when you release it to the public because now you have the public expectation 
on top of you as well as the expectation of all of the leadership of the company so you have all the developers that are they're working and they're working hard it's not easy to develop a game it's a lot of hours um mm -hmm. i'm sure redbeard could you know he could probably expand on that with all the help and aid that he got throughout the little closed beta that they did or closed alpha however you want to say it mm -hmm. yeah but you know that that I, i'm sure you remember that was the weekend where uh, we were, we were being told, oh yeah, uh, Ricky and them, they're coming in on the weekend and they're doing a lot of OT and just, you know, just really burning that midnight oil to, you know, do some last minute polishes to this and that on the game. Meanwhile, what was really happening was they were doing, pumping out a bunch of updates and stuff uh, for the, you know, for all these guys that got to play. So I, I, I know for a fact that they have a date and I know for, well, I, I want to say I know for a fact that they're not gonna give that date out to create uh, what could possibly be uh, false expectations in the sense of yeah, um, they say um, I don't know June first uh, is the release date, and then five days before June first, you know they're still trying to you know figure something out. You know, there's some sort of muck that they got to clean out that is uh, bogging them down. And then, you know, they're going to have to push it back. And that, that creates a lot of uh, frustration in the community. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they don't want that. That that, that pushes people away. As yeah. sad as it is. A lot of people are really impatient. Um, I would say most gamers don't really take the time and effort to think about and try to understand what it takes to, to make a game. What it takes to code a game build models uh and, and everything that goes into that you know the story the dialogue and how everything works and and all the little bits and pieces that go into making all the games that we love to play and enjoy and immerse ourselves in most people just i want it now and i gotta have it now and so they don't you know we're gonna be told like a month before i think I think so too. Maybe uh, I, I assume we're going to hear something probably 90 days out, 60 days out, and then a month out um, for sure. I know we're going to, I know we're going to start hearing stuff here soon about um, a possible EA date. I just kind of feel it, you know, like I, I kind of just feel it um, in the air, you know, that, that something I, these guys have been like, they've been active on social media but they haven't really said a whole lot about gray zone and i feel like they're just letting a bunch of stuff build up like what we got uh what was it yesterday um or when was it today or uh yesterday we got in the faction reveal for gray zone um yeah but like they're feeding us like these bits and pieces of information i feel like they're gonna they're sitting on like a bunch of shit right now and then when the moment is right they're gonna be like all right guys look at this shit ea release uh, open beta, closed beta, private tests, like all this shit, and it's it's gonna be wild. They're just gonna hand us a deck of cards, and it's gonna be a royal flush across the board. That makes sense. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on. So you had said y'all were spread across multiple servers. At any given point, how many people do you feel uh, were on one server? Uh, it was just well shit our case was a little different at least me and my squads were but um there was maybe you know four or five people on at one server um i i think ours with my situation it, most of the time it was just me and then like like three other people on the team in the game with me or it may have been like one other person with me but i had four people in the discord with me talking to me on a vc like asking me what the game is performing like um asking me to mess with a stability i and i file um you know just just shit like that right so i think at any given time the most people we had in one server was about five or six and then the the least would be you know with active players it would be like three two or three yeah, at the least so that's that's my other concern i'm not no developer or anything but um that's that's a very very small small fraction right there what is that like 10 percent or something out of a uh, 48 p uh, players that you're supposed oh, to have man. that's uh, uh that's yeah. the only concerning portion for me 
Well, this wasn't like a um, this wasn't a test of like them overloading the servers. Yeah, they, they didn't want to do that. They they just wanted to see how the game functioned uh, in its current state on the build that they gave us. Now, full discretion here. The build that they ended up giving us to play on at first was uh, a month out of date. So they had already had a much improved build already aside. They just didn't want us to play on the new build because the new build was really unstable. Yes. Yeah. But the build that they gave us was the most stable version of the game that they had. Um, which, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to be real here. You know, game issues aside and everything, uh, optimization issues aside, we never once had a server crash on us. Yeah. Never that's, once had a single server crash. That's that good. good to hear. That's great to hear. Yeah. What, um, uh, I guess with, with the time we have left, it, it would probably be best to discuss what everybody thought about the alpha test footage. And if Redbeard, once you want, uh, once everybody's done speaking on that, if you want to go into your experience with everything. Because uh, everybody, yeah, it, Redbeard has had a very unique experience. That's why I reached out to him and uh, only him on this because it it, it, it was really fascinating for uh, for me, you know, uh, to hear that. It, it gives me very big hopes with these devs for sure. Yeah, but, bro. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to talk about it. Anybody want to give insight on the uh, footage, alpha test footage? You mean like from the uh, you, you mean the IGN or uh, everything? No, I mean, IGN's kind of not the test footage or whatever that I was thinking about. Uh, yeah. Basically just all the creators, every creator's videos. Anything that stood out. We talked about the performance, but... Yeah. So what stood out for me was the lag of stuff that we wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, PvP. Oh. <laughs> the, the draw distance. Uh, I'm not gonna lie distance. to you, but but it was it was it was a roller coaster of I keep watching video after video after video, and they don't touch the subjects that we want to hear about, basically. Like anything that w is worth talking about, and you're in the Discord, and if you're not, please go ahead and join the GCW Discord. We, yeah. We've talked about every possible human thing in there and for every us scenario to, even dinosaurs yeah, and for us even dinosaurs this is true <laughs> and for us to <laughs> see the content creators that got the chance to play not talk about things beyond what we've already talked about was lackluster basically does that make sense red yeah it um might be under nda too though some of the no, stuff of course of course of course it was yeah uh we had man the press kit we were sent was like um you can you guys can show this thing this thing and play the game and have fun with it but you're not allowed to show this 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 or this um you know like one of the things was the hud system like with your right. inventory health systems um and shit like that we weren't allowed to show any of that pvp was another thing that we weren't allowed to show um and then another thing that um I don't really specifically remember reading, but I know people really didn't uh, talk about it was um, more so like more of the back end stuff with the game, right? Um, it was more so, like a lot of back end stuff that we weren't allowed to talk about. Uh, some of the stuff we had seen beforehand, we weren't, you know, like we couldn't say much about, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people had that same exact feeling like, hey, all these content creators got to play. The very few who did, didn't really say anything that we were hoping to hear. And that was that was because there was things that we weren't allowed to talk about, right? right. Um, yeah. Now, you know, Rick hates that shit. He hates it. He he wishes that we would have had free reign to talk about everything. He, he wanted us to talk about a lot more than what we were asked to talk about. But in that same sense, he also told us before we even started that if you do not like what you are playing and and you feel like this is not the game for you, we want you to tell us this. We still want you to make a video. We still want you to give us your feedback. We want you to tell us exactly why you don't like what you're playing. You yeah. Know, and we will watch your video. We will study it and we will keep that motherfucker close to our chest. 
because you were going to be very vital information on how we can make this game more inclusive. And, uh, I mean, and, and that was like, that was a, that was one of the things that won me over. Now, if you guys wouldn't, I guess to kind of just make this transition into my experience with the game, um, cause I know that, you know, you guys are, are very eager and excited to hear my experience. Um, sure. so my experience that I had, uh, like, like tactical gamer said, um, was a very unique one. So I did get to play the play test. And if you watch my YouTube video, you will be able to see that I was the one playing. Um, however, um, I ended up catching the play test on the last two days. It was originally only supposed to be three days, but because of the issues that I had and then a lot of other AMD users had, um, they extended the play test by an extra day. And that was mainly just for stability testing. That was really about it. They still had all the servers up anybody who who played could hop in and play if they wanted to but it was mainly just to make sure that the that the people who were having the most issues got taken care of so um when i first tried to hop into the play test i loaded up the game went straight to the menu uh tried to load up into a server and i would get a ue5 vulcan error right and a ue5 vulcan error isn't necessarily like my computer doesn't agree with unreal engine it's more so like unreal engine telling my system to go fuck itself like there's something in your system that we don't like and we are not executing this program for you I, at this point it stops so i was like okay cool whatever so we we tried a lot of different things um foxic was one of the people who run a strict amd system he was like yo go in and turn off some of the post effects that you have in the adrenaline software so i did that i restarted my computer and it didn't work um and i later found out that I was the first one to have an issue like this, but I found out that there were three or four other AMD users that had an experience similar to mine, but all they had was like horrific frame stability um, where people on NVIDIA uh, graphics cards were getting, you know, 40 to 60 right out of the jump, mainly around 40. Um, AMD users were getting nothing more than 30, um, no matter where they were at in the map. Uh, but I was having this issue where I couldn't play the game at all. so. Immediately after that, um, I spent probably seven or eight hours in a Discord, uh, in, in the in the playtest uh, Discord that we were all invited to, with Rick, Devil Dog, Foxic, Ricky, a bunch of different fucking people from Gray Zone Warfare's camp of developers and, and community managers, and they were like, "Okay, let's try this and let's try this," and, and nothing would work. Um, and it was just, it was this long day of like, oh, fuck, I may not even be able to play this. And, and, you know, while I was trying to figure this stuff out, you know, it, we got to a point where we really couldn't try anything else. And, and Rick was like, Hey, um, we're going to work on this issue. We are not forgetting about this. You are priority number one right now. Your issue has taken precedence over pretty much everything that's going on. Um, let us work on this just you know we're all we're asking is for a little bit of your time and i'm like well fuck i mean i i already scheduled off work for this i don't have anything going on like fuck it my time is yours so we you know we just continue uh with um qa testing and shit like that so the next day happens um or next day comes around and i get hit up by rick and he's like hey uh we just pushed out an update uh to gray zone warfare on steam uh go ahead and update your game and see if this works because we may have figured out what the issue may be but just go ahead and and, and update it and see what happens okay cool so i update the game i launch it and uh it it kind of works but it's still not letting me into the game so i'm like all right cool whatever so, but like so the day before i was talking to rick about maybe getting an i and i file it may have been towards the end of the second day. It's been a while, so I'm kind of forgetting some of my information. Um, but I know at some point during this play test, I had asked if I could have my hands on a stability INI file, um, which would basically allow me to adjust texture pull values outside of what you're able to manually adjust within the game, right? Uh, and this would open up in a text document. I would see like, you know, uh, texture pull size quality and it would be like a value listed. And then I could go in and manipulate the value on a scale from like, you know, zero to, you know, a thousand or whatever. So um, 
uh, I got handed the INI file. I implanted it into the uh, the file that I already had for Gray Zone, and I have, I essentially was able to play the game, but on a low and zero build, meaning that <laughs> everything looked like it was dipped in halftone dots or like <laughs> dipping dots were uh, spilled all over my computer screen. Um, there were no shadows, minimal textures, uh, draw distance, render distance, all of that was uh, almost practically nothing, but I was playing the game. Um, and then during this time, you know, I, I told Rick, I was like, Rick, we got the fucking game to work. I'm actually playing the game right now. Now, no, Devil Dog was walking around with me and he was like, bro, I will literally give you unlimited bragging rights in this discord if you can nail someone with a headshot with your graphics looking like that. And I did. I ended up nailing like three people in the fucking head with the graphics like that. I don't know how I <laughs> did it, funny. but I did it. So like I got big dick bragging rights in that discord until I'm dead in the dirt. Um... <laughs> But um, I know Rick was like, okay, so here's what we got going on now. We have our, essentially, our tech guys and our QA testers and, 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 and some of our devs, they went immediately back to the office as soon as you, like, had the first issue with the play test, right? So they had been there pretty much all day, and as soon as they figured out you were having a UE5 Vulcan error, they immediately went back and started working on, on, uh, on an updated build to push out. Um or working on a patch to push out rather and then uh you know the second or third day rolls around and he's like hey red i got these guys going back to the office and we're grabbing the spec sheets and we're gonna build your system to spec and we're going to test out different builds of the game on the same pc that you have but just in our office i was like oh that's awesome he's like the bad side is you may have to wait about two weeks before you can even touch the game again I'm like, well, fuck, man, the play test is going to be over. But like, honestly, you guys have done more than I could have ever asked for. So if it takes two weeks, let it take two weeks. Like, I'll sign NDAs. I'll do whatever the fuck. Just, you know, whatever you guys feel like you need to do, do it. And then if you feel like you have a good answer, come and tell me. And it's like, you know what? Bet. Awesome. Not even fucking eight hours later. <laughs> Not even eight fucking hours later, I was being told that they had my system completely built and that they were currently testing the game on a system that was similar to mine. And that wasn't just my system. That was everybody who had an AMD system. So they went out and bought components for like four or five AMD PCs, built them to spec, and then tested multiple versions of the game on the PCs. And then... Uh, the third day, later in the third day comes around, we get pushed another update and then they're like, hey, try the game now. I tried it, I loaded it up and it worked. It fucking worked. It, it, the game that I played on the, on the, near the end of the third day going into the fourth day of the test looked exactly, uh, damn near exactly how my video uh, portrayed it to look now the reason why I say damn near is because uh, you know full discretion here and, and Rick knows about this I used some upscaling shit in DaVinci some stabilization uh, I, I, I did that to increase the viewers experience right um, but what footage you're seeing of the game in my video is how my game pretty much looked so I went from not being able to play to uh, playing on low and zero to playing in a beautifully fleshed out environment in 72 hours and and they apologized to me religiously throughout the entire time that the play test happened these guys were hitting my dms constantly saying bro we're so sorry that this is happening rick was saying bro if we can make it up to you in any way just let us know like we're so sorry this is going on but we got you like i promise we got you we'll we'll get everything squared away I made a point in my video to say that if it were any other company that I had play tested a game like this for and I was having this amount of issues, I would have never expected them to DM me. I would have never expected to hear anything from them. They would have never sent me an INI &I file to mess around with. They would have not done half the shit that they were going to do. And then by the time the last patch went out and the last day of the play test happened, People who were having issues with frame stability no longer really had those issues. 
Yeah. They, the people on NVIDIA who were getting, you know, 40, 50 frames and they weren't really going any higher, were now getting 60 to 70 to 80 frames, mostly 60. In some areas, it would shoot up to 80. Uh, people on AMD systems who were having horrific frame stability issues, those guys were playing, you know, in the 60 FPS range. Um, and, and then for me, I was able to play the fucking game finally. And, and again, I got to stress... I was prepared to wait two weeks to get an answer, to get an answer. And I was delivered a fully fleshed out product in 72 hours. Yeah. You cannot sit here and tell me anything bad about these fucking guys. You cannot sit here and tell me that they don't care. This is a fake game. It's a scam game. You can't tell me any of that shit. If you're one of those people who are coming to, to the table with that type of energy, fuck yourself. Seriously, fuck yourself. I'm telling you right now, if, if if this, what I'm telling you right now does not make you, if you're at a weird disposition with Grey Zone Warfare and you're not really sure what to think about Grey Zone or what to think about the game, at least listen to what I told you. Really take it in and realize that these guys are not here to fuck anybody over. This game is made by gamers for gamers. This game was made by gamers for content creators. These people care about the money you're going to give them. They care more than I would say most studios do right now. But I hope that my experience for people who don't necessarily have a lot of faith in the project or are very curious and nervous about what the future of the project is going to look like, please let my words register with you well. Please, for the love of fucking God. I, I can't tell you how many games I've played that have been absolute shit and that I've had to have conversations with people about and those conversations eventually lead to, well, the game just isn't for you then. It, it's just not for you. It's just, you know, it's not for you. Yes, I mean, how much did you spend on, on Edge of Darkness to play Tarkov Arena? $170 yep. and it plays like fucking garbage? I guess the game just isn't for you. No, yep. no, that's that's not it. That is not it with these guys. These guys, th these motherfuckers would stay up for an additional week straight if the play test went that long and I was still having these issues. They even wanted to extend the play test to a fifth day. And they said, fuck it. We don't care how much money this is going to cost us. We're solving this issue. And I said, please do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please don't do that shit. If we have this issue resolved by the end of the play test, that would be probably the greatest comeback story in 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 double A history, triple A history. Yeah. That would be an amazing fucking comeback. You know, to be honest, I think they're triple A. <laughs> I think uh, so too. I I would I would give them their flowers and call them triple A right now. Yeah, no matter what, what it's a lot better than triple. Whatever they do with this game, I know they're giving a seven year outlook, but at the rate at they at which they fixed your stuff, I mean I, mm -hmm. I know they didn't make the EA, but I I could see them being very much so finished within six years. I, I could see them I beating that so seven year mark. Or what I they want so to achieve. Years tops. <laughs> two years tops. Whoa, okay. <laughs> No, 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 like, like with how this game has grown during the like since I like I joined at like 20k, now there's 42, 43k or whatever. Like, I think a lot of people are looking for this game, and the more money they get from the EA, the more the more uh, more hires they can get and all that. So I, yeah. yeah, I think they will be, I think they will be fleshed out within two or three years. And uh, with that being said. W if they make a banger, which they're going to make a banger, this is going to turn heads from AAA titles. Like, yeah. fuck Call of Duty and your fucking repeat bullshit of fucking fucking stupid donkey skins. Stupid shit like that, whatever the hell they got going on now. You know, that you pay 45 bucks for every month or whatever their shit to get something new to keep the game fresh. That's... No, that's 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 stupid. It's ignorant to do stuff like that. We want a fresh, great game with none of that BS in it. Yeah, we want something so actually think... not pay to play, you know, 
nothing like that. No microtransactions, you know. I think I, I think it, uh, it's the uh, indie game developers' time nowadays, cause the, yeah, uh, like the developing tools are so easy to get. It's much easier to make a good game instead of like back in the day you had like hard code every fucking thing like yeah like i think the indie indie developer will rise and the triple a's will lose a lot of shit because they've done this so much they are like stuck in like ah oh, let's not talk about it uh let's not talk to the community blah 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 but all the indie gamers are talking to all the uh like talking to the community l like learning stuff what do you want listening to the guys like yeah, just Battlefield 2042. Like they had, yeah. Like they paid that game was ass. Hundred, yeah, they they paid hundred streamers. Like, what do you think about the game? What do you want in it? And they did they did they didn't listen to one thing. The community. It's like, why the fuck? Yeah, like I'm I'm thankful for you paid us, but why didn't you listen to our like we, like we wanted we Battlefield 4 all living. over again, but better. <laughs> Like, like <laughs> we do this for a living. We play games. No, no, bad we know, company three. You mean? <laughs> no, 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 no. We know what sticks. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like the triple A's will fall out to double A or single A, and then the indie indie developers, uh, indie developers are like Murphy <clears throat> Games and other guys will rise to triple A level, basically, just because how they handle the community and stuff. Th think about this be uh, this game becoming a banger real quick. So let's just say four to six years, it's a real good banger. And people have their eyes on this, it, this whole company, uh, MFG, okay, Madfinger Games. They're gonna have their eyes on this company. Whatever titles they bring out later, as long as they stay tried and true, and then try and meet their EAs and whatnot on there, that, that's just gonna build, that it's gonna build off of that, you know? Even, I, I remember Battlefield 4 whenever it released. There's hardcore and core mode. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Hardcore was down for like four fucking months, bro. I had to play core. That's not what I wanted to do, but I still did it. You know? Because that's what I wanted. That's that's the type of game I wanted. This game is quite literally everything I want besides Battlefield 4 type Siege of Shanghai helicopter gameplay where I get fucking 80 kills to one death a game, you know? I mean, that's kind of probably can't get that here, you know, but uh, that's coming, that's coming. With yeah, mods. yeah, 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 with mods. <laughs> with mods, you know, yeah, with, with mods. What yeah. Harsh Doorstep has done recently with their whole uh, helicopter stuff, I had seen that. Uh, it's pretty wild, bro. It, it, the future it is, is here. The future wild. is here. But, the future uh, is India, yeah. man. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The future is India that we're in a very very rare position as a gaming community right for sure things are evolving in a way that maybe we didn't want to initially right we know that early access at the beginning was thing and now AAA titles took away what it was and now they just give half baked games right for a full price and then yeah. dlc in all the bugs they want to fix and whatever yeah but yeah, like in terms of mfg and how i personally see mfg mfg is quite a diamond in the rough just like other developers and i'm just going to mention one i don't know if you guys have played hell at loose yep no. right hell at loose was also a gem of a development team that at some point decided that they were going to sell their IP and they sold it to Team 17. And now none of the developers originally from the team are working on the game anymore. Right? Yikes. That is my only fear. That is the only fear I have of any game indie developer. <laughs> that they at some point sell off the, the IP because for some reason they don't want to work on it anymore. Personally, I don't think that's the case with DGW. Because I'm pretty sure Red can talk about this more because you had more chances of speaking with Mara, but we all know Mara's swimming in money. He has enough money <laughs> to to fund GZW as, as much as he wants, right? And that is the faith that I have personally in GZW, that it's in good hands and it's going in the right direction. Yeah. Can we concur on that? Oh, oh 1,000%. One, he knows what he's doing. If he was able to make multiple successful 
like genuinely successful mobile games like yeah bro That's, he has no yeah. issue making this shit successful yeah. and, and yeah. if you guys didn't know madfinger i don't know if you guys have really ever like dove into mobile games before but madfinger made dead trigger and dead trigger 2 which is considered like the best zombie shooter mobile games that is to peak, play yeah. of all time yep peak yeah peak and, mobile game. Uh, and mobile games are quite fucking huge like the market and it's much harder to get, get into than pc games to be honest yeah. that's exactly yeah. it yeah. that's exactly yeah. it i hate i hate it when people discredit them for yeah. oh they were a mobile game company do you not realize that nearly 50 percent of all fucking gamers are mobile gamers yeah. Like, yeah. people don't understand that. Like, that is a horrifically large margin. And to make yeah. Yeah. multiple yeah. successful games in that market, yeah. no, I fuck, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. Fuck that. I think there I was mean, a metric, <laughs> like, in 2016 or something like that. There was, like, uh, mobile gamers have made double amount of games that, like, PC gamers and Xbox gamers has ever done right now. And right. 2016 or something like that. Like, right. yeah. the market is so much much more like so huge compared to pc gaming or or, or console together basically to be yeah, fair man sure. and this goes back to everything we've talked about this whole entire time we have a different mindset mm -hmm. to the great populace of gamers right i i get an ick every single time somebody that has like 30 games in their phone <laughs> says that they're not a gamer because they don't have a console or a pc okay <laughs> yeah yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't understand, you know, and this is not even about console wars. It's it's just the gaming community is is weird, basically, right now. It is in an odd place. And us, the minority uh, that have a very good grasp of understanding of where the gaming community was and where it's been heading the past maybe 15 years, right? Give nice. or take. It is just, I don't know, man. It's weird. We're just in a very weird scenario. And MFG is in the right moment to capitalize on how the scene for development teams has been going on a downgrade the past five years. I 1000% I agree. An another thing oh. to add to that is who's to say MFG doesn't make a GZWM as in Grey Zone Warfare Mobile? You know what I mean? Hey, that would be kind of sick. <laughs> I I'm not even going to lie to you. Like I got my legit, dude. Note. For real, I, man, I, I'm patenting that right now, so they can't I, do I, it. I, <laughs> yeah. So they gotta pay me. Hey Rick, you gotta pay me for the idea now, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I would love to play it on the Steam Deck, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, hey, listen, God, I will do a video on my Steam Deck. I will do my oh, best. Oh yikes! <laughs> I will do oh, the best God. I can. I think uh, Madfinger Games is basically like. Um, dice in like early 2000s like with early battlefield 2 like yeah i think i think there's that's where they are like because back then they actually did like proper community like outreach like in battlefield 2 like yeah, man. early like, yeah, social the, media yeah he is man once they got yeah, big they I, didn't care yeah yeah exactly exactly so i just i just hope they don't sell out like to a big company that I just that. everything over and just keeps growing to be a fucking behemoth a banger i would love yeah I, yeah like i would so i would love them to see expanding on this game like this <clears> might be the ground zero thing it might be some alien thing so it might be this is just the first fucking map because something else happens in like i don't know Siberia or like uh, yeah some other like place in the world like yeah they could also they... expand into other games with depending upon how they take that approach towards ground zero and whatnot and um I didn't mean to cut you off but also we have PvP that's not going to be so forced you know where you're you're gonna be able to get into PvP as much as you want, but um, who's to say that they don't do something like Arena, you know, Tarkov Arena? You, you never know. They could easily implement something like that yeah. for this and game. With the, 
with how realistic the shooting is and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, who, who uh, wouldn't yeah. want that? It's, I, it's a very unique I point. I, I played Call of Duty Black Ops 1, so that was like 2014, 16, or something like that, or even earlier, I can't remember. But I, pl I only played hardcore mode because the guns behaved like real guns, or close to it at least, like you shot him two, three times and he was dead, like, that's it. Yeah. That's what I want. I don't want the fucking bullet sponge. And he knows exactly, like, because I was the one that found stupid spots, basically. And as soon as I found a spot, then it spread on the server, like, oh, he has that spot. And then that started, like, and then I just saw it everywhere, like, oh, that, that, that's my spot. How the fuck did everyone know about that? Like, so yeah, I wish uh, they actually made a search and destroy, because I love that mode. Uh, it's basically yeah. CS, but yeah, like search, uh, search and destroy with the hardcore uh, of the Grace on Warfare thing. But I, I, I want that at the end of the Grace on Warfare development, basically, when they go 1.0. And that's that's another whole thing, like with mods, you know. I um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I honestly hope they the don't bring out the uh, the ability for mods until it's like stupid stable. Like I mean, stupid. I. I'd rather personal, private servers long before they uh, throw mods out for everybody. Yeah. Official mods, you know, like theme linked mods. But um, right, because they they could also capitalize on like how I just said. So for the whole PvP deal, I don't know if this game's got room to incorporate. Like um, I, I allude to saying a PvP island since we're on an island. Have an island where you could take the little bird to a PvP island. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it it's only forty eight players. You know, you're just making the map smaller at that point. If you play PvP, you might be the only one playing PvP in the right. actual big gray zone map. Everybody else is on PvP island, so it'd probably be best to make probably even a whole other mode or another game. Honestly, uh, or or like an, an another like. PVE island server basically. So yeah. you go so the like you all go into the fob like on the normal map, but you can't actually go out in the map because it's like blocked it, off or something. And you take the like the helicopter to the PvP island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the so, best way would be like Ark. Ark survival. That's the best way to stay. You had the island, then you had the center, and then I, don't know. I can't remember the other ones. All different servers. And basically, whenever you, <laughs> you came up with a new map, people from the island would just disappear. You know, no more OGs there. So it's, I don't know, it's just a big balance thing. But um, I'd like to wrap it up a little bit. Uh, if anybody wants to add anything, feel free. Draw anything distance. at all, you know? Draw distance. Draw, Draw distance? distance. <laughs> okay. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> so I saw, I saw the, I, I've seen all the videos, just saying. Uh, yeah. And when I saw the draw distance, like, oh my god, they actually have a good draw distance. I don't. Uh, Redbeard maybe knows this. Can you, can you change the draw distance in the in the options? Please say no. Uh, I don't think so. I didn't yes. see any option for it. That would be good. Oh my god, yeah, because I I want everyone to have the same draw distance. I don't want. Daisy, Arma, or whatever. When you lie in a bush, you think you're safe, but the guy that is 200 meters away can see you because the bush is, isn't fucking rendered. Cause for sure. When I saw the fly, I, I in, didn't see. I didn't see any fucking uh, option to change uh, drawing distance, even on like the lowest settings possible. You, yeah, can, I don't okay. think you can change the render di uh, yeah. distance or draw distance. So what I saw. Pair ATX or who, whoever it was, he ran a 2070 and like an old like like old 9000 series I think it was or something, and he had l like medium to low settings. When he flew in, I could still see stuff draw in like the render distance was like a thousand meters or so. Like I was like, wow, that is that is fucking beautiful. Um, cause I don't want, like, I want to be sitting in a bush with a sniper rifle, hunting people, just picking people off. That'd be the best. Um, what else? Oh yeah, um, oh fuck. Yeah, 
yeah, the updates, if you guys seen that, by the way, like on the Steam database for Grades of Warfare. Uh, you'd have to explain a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna link it in general for you. Uh, so, on that, you, uh, you can actually see the update day, uh, like, rate of the game. So they updated the game four hours ago, like, nine o'clock in the evening. And yeah. basically, during one day, they have, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven updates. Like, they are pushing updates so much. Yeah. I love to see this. I'm, I'm happy they you brought that out. Yeah. That's... Like, they're... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's very good to note. Um, I don't know if we could like take that and put that up against another company, uh, any other game, on how many updates. Uh, that I, let's see. I'm not here. sure. You know, we could do that sometime. Tell me, uh, what, what's a AAA game on Steam? <laughs> I'm scared, given that we don't really know exactly what the content of the, those updates are. Oh no, no, yeah. we don't know, but we know they're like they're actually working. Let's save that for another one, though, because this would go on for four hours. This video, and I'm sure people gotta get <laughs> places. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I, I gotta I gotta go put my daughter to bed like uh, like I don't know five minutes ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, I, we're... I, gotta, I gotta go eat dinner. Well, we're sorry about that. Anything you wanna quickly add, Luna? Man, I'm like Stilgar, bro. <clears throat> I'm the true man hype, bro. We're all hyped. All right? This is, <laughs> For real. This is it. This is the... Uh, if nobody knows, Dune 2, Stilgar, the true hype man. That's... that's Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. All right? That's the man. All right? This is the game. This is the game. If you guys are tired of Tarkov bullshittery, this is it. This is a team that is working their ass off tirelessly. And I kid you not, man, if you're in the Discord, and I will say this, I say this in every video I do, man, join the bloody Grey Zone Warfare Discord. Yeah, 100%. Please. It'll it'll be linked below Please. in the description, guys. You have to join it. If you don't want to take people's word in YouTube or whatever media you're using, go to the Discord, bro. You will see that the devs are there and they will talk to you. It's a if wonderful community. Even Steam forum is quite sporadic Poppin. and stupid. No, 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 no. It, 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 it's, it is stupid question there, like, that you could find Are out. Are there dinosaurs in Grey Zone? And oh, they go God. Like, Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, just go to the Discord and you will find everything because there's millions of people the, that's the been people, here for a long time. The amount of people who play PC games that still do not have Discord is beyond me. But um, yeah, guys, that concludes us. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Go subscribe to Luna. Go subscribe to Redbeard. And we'll see you on the flip side for the next week podcast, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. Peace out. Later, guys. <laughs>